What is going on guys? Welcome back to the IR Gurus channel. Uh, today we are going to be covering installing and update apps on the app host. Uh, this is specifically for app host, not the integration server. So what we'll do here is we're going to start out on the default um, login screen here when you get into SOAR. We're going to go up here to the top right, um, right underneath the name and the organi organization that is listed uh, for the SOAR instance. And we're gonna to go to the admin settings here. From this page, we're actually gonna jump over to the apps section. And from the apps section, what we're gonna go ahead and do is, uh, you can see that I've already got a couple of apps installed here, and you can see that I've got an app host already installed. Now I'm not gonna be covering app host installation today. Um, however, it is fairly simple. Um, once you get to the screen, you can actually just click add app host provide your name and hit add app, uh, app host. Um, then it's going to give you uh, some output um, in which you'll be able to copy and paste that into your app host um, itself. And that actually will establish the connection. Um, I'll leave a link below if you guys have any more questions about that. Um, I might put it out a video later, but that's uh, out here. If you come out to this site here, um, this actually has uh, all the prerequisites that uh, need to be installed um, for the um, for the app host, uh, as well as any network configurations if you guys are behind a firewall. And then, of course, uh, here's the installation um, section here where it's going to walk you through actually um, doing the create pairing, uh, which is what I had just talked about, and then the creating the app host, which is done on the app host side itself. Um, so if you guys are trying to figure out how to do that, um, feel free to put a comment down below and I'll try to help answer any questions. Uh, if I get enough questions going on down there, maybe I'll just put out a video. After we've got the app host already set up and ready, uh, we're ready to actually install our apps. Um, now the location we're gonna go to get apps is actually gonna be out on the App Exchange website here. I'll also link that down below as well. Um, but out here, you can come out here um, and you can see that I've selected, I only want the SOAR integrations that are out here um, or the SOAR apps. Um, and you can see up here at the top, you've got all of the IBM related apps or any of the ones that are created from either IBM or one of their business partners. And then down here at the bottom is the community provided applications, um, which is essentially anything that, uh, uh, any of the community members, uh, such as their customers or anything like that, create and put out here. Um, so we'll, we're gonna be doing two things today. Um, first one, we're actually gonna go ahead and grab this, uh, this data tables one. This will allow us to actually, um, actually update this one, because as you can see here, we actually already have it installed, um, but it's only version uh, 1.2. So we're gonna go ahead and update that since it looks like there's a 2.0 version out here. Um, of course, while you're out here, you can also grab the documentation if you've got any questions about how to use one of these apps. Um, and we'll go ahead and grab this uh, here. However, I can't download this until I log in, so let me go ahead and log in so I can do that. If you don't have an account here, of course, feel free to create one. Um, should be free um, to create, so just Grab one or create an account here and uh, and grab the apps you, that you're looking for. All right, as you can see, I'm now logged in. So we're gonna go ahead and hit download here. This will give us the updated version of that. And it gives us some integrity information here, such as the hash value, so we can verify that this is correct. Then what we're gonna do is let's come back out to the app exchange. I go ahead and click SOAR again, because we only want the SOAR apps. Um, and then the other one that I want to install is going to be the utilities functions for SOAR. Um, essentially, this used to be called FN Utilities. Um, it's actually, I think it's still called FN Utilities um, within the code, um, but now we're calling it uh, Utility Functions for SOAR here. Um, and this just gives a bunch of great, uh, bunch of great functions that will allow you to um, do a bunch of stuff with the data that, that is within the platform here. Um, so more on that to come. I do plan on making a video on how to use some of the more advanced functionality of this. Um, but for now, I'm just going to grab this so that we can go ahead and install it. Right. Let's jump back here into the Q Radar 
store settings and we're going to go ahead and click install here um, the first one is just going to be installing the integration so what we're going to do here is we're going to select file and we're going to go ahead and grab the utilities one that i just mentioned um, we're going to give it the entire zip file that that we downloaded no changes no ha don't have to unpack it or anything we're just going to grab that entire zip file here and hit upload file then what it's going to do here is as it processes this package it's just going to check to see uh, if there's going to be any changes that um, potentially are going to affect any other uh, integrations that have already been installed um, so it's going to say that hey some of these things already exist um, so it's not really something that we need to worry about, but it is going to give you that warning, letting you know that this is uh, going to be changing some other things here that might already be in the platform. We'll just click next. Um, on this page here, it gives us all of the customizations that are going to be added. Um, so you can see all the activity fields here that are being added, any of the functions that are being added, um, any function inputs specifically. Um, and then we can keep scrolling down here. Of course, the message destination that we're going to need, um, some of the rules and some of the workflows that it's also going to be adding here. Um, so these are going to give you the example ideas. Um, I will click install here and let this go ahead and install. Um, while this is installing, I do want to mention that um, any of these example workflows, um, such as the, the workflows that we just showed here any of the example rules or any anything that's uh, labeled as example really from any of these integrations just keep in mind that if you go and update the app like we're going to do here shortly with the uh, data tables one if you change the example um, to make it work for what you're trying to do um, whenever you update it's going to wipe that entire entirely out of the system um, so it is highly recommended that you actually basically just duplicate that uh, workflow or that rule um, so that you can always maintain your work and it's not going to get wiped out when updating one of these apps. All right, now that we're in here, of course, we're going to be on the main page of the app. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to look through a couple things. Of course, here's where we can do the uh, upgrades, the uninstalls, deploys. Um, we can decide which app host we're going to deploy to here. Uh, we can go over here to customizations. Again, see all of the customizations that are being added to this system um, from this integration. And then we can jump finally over here to the configuration. The configuration here, um, what we're going to see here is each one of these app hosts um, have their own app.config. Um, if you're familiar with the integration servers, uh, we just had one large app.config file that housed all of the configs for all of the integrations that were running on that server. Uh, now each one of these app hosts, since they're containerized, are just gonna be running their own app.config. So when we jump into here, you can see that this is actually fairly cleaned up. We can go ahead and put a little space there and clean this up just a little bit. But you can see here that it only has the FN utilities um, section for the config, and then of course the resilient section. Now the resilient section is pretty much done for you every time um, because of the fact that I am running the server locally um, and just using an IP, not a uh, DNS name or anything like that. Um, I will have to do a slight modification down here, but you can just ignore that. All right, back up here at the top. Um, so this is essentially where we're going to set up our config. Um, again, I will touch more on this in a later video when I discuss how to use the FN utilities. But of course, um, applying any of these configs or anything like that where or maybe we're gonna add a new, uh, a new command or something like that, that's where we're gonna add this is, is all in here. Um, so feel free to read those, um, the, the knowledge article um, here within the app documentation. Uh, if you do have any questions on uh, how to use a certain app or how to configure it here within the app.config file. Um, after you get all this done, uh, you will have the option to down here, select which app host you wanna run. So since this is an IBM published app, I'm gonna go ahead and hit IBM app host, um, which is the app host that I configured uh, with default configurations. 
Um, I can touch on the private app post uh, in, a, in another video. Actually, that's already technically out, um, which is part of my class on building your own integration. Um, so feel free to go check out that video if you've got any uh, questions on how to build your own integrations. Um, then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and test config. Um, this is going to use this config to uh, test it against the uh, test script that's actually built into the app, uh, just to verify that all of the connections are set up and proper. Um, in this case, it's only really gonna be testing the connection to resilient, so it shouldn't take long and it should be successful here. All right, and as you can see here, uh, that configuration was successful. Um, so at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hit save and push changes. All right, and from here, we're gonna go back over to the details section and we're going to hit deploy and that will actually deploy it out to the app host. Um, and then up here in the top left, we're just gonna look for the deployment to be successful and the app running and ready to go. All right, and we can see that the status now says ready for use. Um, so this app is now ready, uh, up and ready, and ready for us to start using the integration uh, in the way that it needs it, that it can work. Uh, this one has a lot of functionality, so uh, won't like I said, won't cover that just now. Um, what we're going to do next is we're actually going to go ahead and upgrade the uh, an integration here. Um, so you can see all these up or all these integrations are installed. Um, but one of the ones that we are still wanting to do is we're wanting to upgrade this from version 1.2 to version 2.0. Um, so the way we can do that is two different ways. First way is we can hit the uh, vertical ellipses here and we can hit upgrade. Um, the other way that we can do this is actually just by clicking into the app itself. And then down here in the bottom right, we have the option again to upgrade. Uh, so when you click on the upgrade, it's going to bring up a similar menu as to what we saw when we actually installed an app for the first time. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to select this. We're going to grab the updated file again, the exact same way that the file came down to us. We're just going to leave it that way and we're going to hit upload file. This is then going to do all the checks as it would for doing a basic install. Um, and then we're going to click next again. Here are all of the customizations that are going to be uh, involved here. Um, and off to the right here, you can also see that some of these things are going to actually be updated. Um, and so you can go down through and you can see what is being added or updated into the, the system here. We'll click upgrade after that's after we go through all that. All right, and this now has been successfully upgraded. Um, the system will not automatically deploy, so you can see that this is still in a status of waiting for configuration and test. Uh, so what we'll do here is we'll go back into the app config. And as you can see, this one actually doesn't have any other integration other than connecting to Resilient. Um, so we really don't have to test anything, um, but we can come down here and run this test again if we want. All right, and we can see that, again, this was successful, which was expected. No no real special changes since it's just trying to connect to Resilient um, or SOAR. And so now we will just click um, Save and Push Changes. And then just like before, we'll go out to the Details section and we'll go ahead and hit Deploy here and wait for this to successfully be deployed. All right, and we're back out here. We can see that this has successfully deployed and it is ready to be used, just like the other app that we just installed. And so at this point, we have sh I've shown you how to install a brand new app, as well as how to update a uh, app that you already have out on your system there. Um, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment in the uh, comment section below. Uh, and if these videos are helping you, I would really appreciate it if you give me a like and a follow. And uh, hopefully, uh, if you got any ideas for videos you would like to see, Feel free to drop those below as well in the comments um, just so I can kind of get a feel for what people are wanting to see with us as we grow this channel. Um, appreciate all of you guys and hope to see you soon.